vultures are irreplaceable in the ecosystem because they are so highly specialised to be good scavengers. They find carcasses really quickly and they clean them up really quickly, much better than mammalians like jackals and hyenas. They help to prevent the spread of disease, we think, by getting rid of carcasses. Things like rabies and anthrax, which affect people and affect our livestock. So it's going to have huge economic problems for the country um, and health problems for people and for livestock if we don't have vultures around. So we do need to take care of them. Radio Message, good luck to uh, Thanks for letting us know. Right? Steve, tell me if you see any jumping. Say again? Come, you guys. <laughs> Just lower that one finger, you're just going to poke his eye in a second. Yeah, so okay, I've got the one piece there. Good. Okay. When you're wanting to tag or measure or ring a vulture, you need to first get your hands on it, which is not as easy as it sounds. You have to trap it. So there's a few different ways you can trap it, but all of them will involve an early morning, <laughs> getting up early with your team of people, because it takes a whole team to handle a big bird like a vulture. Side to side. We're going to pull the feet back and you're going to stand behind me yeah. and hold the feet there. Okay. One in each hand. Back to, yeah? yeah Perfect. I've got and try and hold above the leg. Above, above the leg. So we fit a little patagial tag onto this area of the vulture's wing called the patagium. Um, and it's a very visible tag with big numbers on a bright yellow background. And it's just a very cheap way of monitoring the vulture. So these birds, when they fly to Botswana or Namibia or Zimbabwe, people can say, hey, we've seen your tag. And they can call us and tell us that how far the birds traveled and where it might be nesting and things like that. It's getting to experience, to be so close to a bird and see things that most people would never have the chance to see is magical. Getting to see small details like the eyelashes or the color of the skin or what the inside of the mouth looks like is really cool. Vultures are surprisingly strong when we, when we manage to grab them. You have to give them a good firm grip on them to keep their wings closed. And you've got to keep that beak away from you, at that bill. It's, uh, it's razor sharp, uh, obviously for tearing meat, and pretty strong. So if you get your fingers in the wrong place, um, yeah, you'll be going to hospital. The welfare of the birds is always our top priority. We don't want to cause undue stress to these animals that are so highly threatened. It's always at the back of our minds. Um, so we're always as quick as we can be when we're working with them, as gentle and yet firm, because you can't lose your grip on the bird. So you do have to be a little bit firm. We also take the opportunity to take measurements and samples and really maximize the opportunity we have with the bird to get as much data as possible, which will go on to help research and and other areas. The volunteers get hands-on in there and it's a really good experience for them. Something they might not do elsewhere. Babies would have, or the youngsters would have more like flex and then a very young bird would be pretty much solid brown this whole back. We'll have lots of yellow blotches on and the adult will have completely black skin um, on the head and neck. So if you want to release it. Yeah that'd be great. Keep keep I think that's my favourite part of trapping is letting the bird go. It's nice to give someone who hasn't had a lot of experience a chance to hold the bird and be so close up. So often we let whoever, whichever volunteer is really keen with us um, help us to let the bird go. And it's awesome and a nice big relief as well when you see them fly that two or three hundred meters before they disappear. Um, just see them flying nice and strong. You can see the wing tags looking fine on the bird. Um, yeah, that's my favorite part of trapping.
Salati has a vulture restaurant which is regularly active um, and this is a safe haven for vultures to come and feed and we have all different species of vultures and marabou storks and raptor species come as well. The vultures have such big ranges they can fly to hundreds of kilometers in, in a day and they'll spot another column of vultures circling a carcass for easily 70 kilometers away. That's how good their eyesight is. We know they can see between 5 and 10 kilometers in a straight line of sight, which is absolutely amazing. So they can see if another vulture might be going down to a carcass, even if they're several kilometers away, they'll keep going and, and catch up with that one. Columns of vultures go up for half a kilometer easily. Trying to count them in the sky is almost impossible to see so many. It's just a whirlwind, a tornado type, type thing going on. Once the vultures get to that, that height, when they take the thermals up, they pretty much just fly in a straight line or in an area. And once they see another vulture going down to a carcass, then it's sort of just a domino effect of all the vultures in the area go to that same carcass. And as soon as one starts eating, everyone else joins in and comes in really quickly. You can very quickly go from seeing one vulture to 50 vultures to 200 vultures in just a matter of 20 minutes all pile in and it's an absolute feeding frenzy and they're trying to sort out hierarchies and social uh, structures. The sound is incredible, it's actually a sound you don't normally hear too often in the bush. It becomes like a rugby squad to me, it's like watching rugby players, especially the white back vultures, just getting stuck in. There's no politeness or manners going on, you just get stuck in with your food if you're a vulture. Absolutely crazy, these birds fighting each other, jumping on top of each other and just trying to get in position to, to get some food. So there's, I'd say, five most common species that we get here in the low felt and on Salati Game Reserve in particular. The most common one's called the white back vulture and very boisterous, like rough and tumble kind of bird. That's the one you'll see most frequently, eating muscle mostly. And then you'll get the tiny little hooded vulture and it's got a very slender bill. They say it's got a bill like a toothpick. <laughs> and that is designed or adapted to eat the little specks and little morsels of meat that will get flung around in this fray of feeding. Cape vultures will come in and bully each other and you know, make lots of noise and try and get their bits and pieces and maybe go somewhere else to eat. And then the lappet-faced vulture is usually specialising on bones and cartilage, things like the ribs. So that one often hangs around later when the others have already fed. And then the white-headed vulture might come to a carcass, but they also hunt a little bit. So they might not come at all, preferring to hunt something like a scrub hare or something else out in the bush. So vultures are severely under threat, um, not just in Southern Africa, but all of Africa. And this might be due to poisoning through lead or agriculture or traditional medicine. Poisoning is a worry. It's happening all across Africa. And the problem with poisoning is that it kills so many birds at once. So other threats like power line electrocutions or drowning in unsafe farm reservoirs, for example, will just kill one vulture at a time, but poisoning can kill 500 vultures even more in one go. Habitat loss is also a major threat as we can't protect their entire home range. I think conservation can be quite a depressing subject sometimes. <laughs> But I think you also have to stay positive um, as a conservationist. You can't focus on the negative all the time because we have had conservation successes all across the world. Salati has provided uh, a safe haven, safe space for vultures over the last 10 years. We've seen an increase in, in nesting sites for them. One of the things they need is very tall trees and it's why we have to actively manage our elephant population through elephant impact surveys and try and keep that balance because if we lose our tall trees then we're going to lose our vultures nests as well. Conservation areas like Salati is one are essential for vultures. These are the areas that we have to protect. They're important for foraging. They're really natural areas still with wild animals and the normal processes that we should have, the carnivores and the ungulates moving around. So the foraging is really important and also nesting habitat. Without vultures we would live in a very dirty place to be honest. <laughs> They really do just clean up the ecosystem and cycle those nutrients back in. Um, so without vultures we find ourselves in a very tricky situation because they're very difficult to replace. Even scavengers can't replace the uh, ecosystem services that they provide.